Hi, my name is Catherine Flores. I am a current UROC H scholar, and my presentation will be discussing electronic music as a vehicle for inclusivity. My faculty mentor is Dr. Catherine Steele Broca of the Seymour Said English Department. I'll be covering a brief introduction of electronic music and its implementations into today's theatrical society and musical society as a whole, my research hypothesis slash argument, methods and materials that were used during the study, results and conclusions. Emerging on the United States popular music chart from the 1970s, electronic music remains a really dominant force in today's music industry. The mid-1980s saw a really high rise in the use of keyboard synthesizers through the genre of disco and house music, and this is when we really see electronic music flourish among producers and recording artists. Electronic music is really an umbrella term for genres such as techno and electronic dance music, which is often known as EDM. Um, to name a few. Popular producers of today include Zed, Calvin Harris, Skrillex, who's collaborated with Justin Bieber, and David Guetta, who produced Sia's um, hit single, Titanium. Um, and these producers all collaborate with different pop artists and mainstream artists that have songs on the radio today and are really, really popular. So different production incorporates digital audio workstations, which are computerized interfaces. They include drum machines, and electronic musical instruments especially. Electronic music is based off of experimentation mainly, uh, which means sampling and looping, um, which an artist can take a few chord progressions from one producer's um, and insert their stems into their audio workstation. Um, inserting stems meaning fundamental instruments that are used. This creates a whole new production using the basis of another artist's creation. So essentially, this is a really collaborative matter when it comes to electronic music implementation. And rather than using compositions from composers such as Bach or John Bennett of the 1500s, um, theatrical scores can now include electronic music as the basis for their musical scoring. And we see influences of rap and hip hop um, that convey historical events on the Broadway stage with Lin-Manuel Miranda's Hamilton. My hypothesis for this study states that electronic music provides an inclusive technological approach to composing theatrical musical scores. Digital audio workstations, also known as a DAW, allow artists and amateur artists to participate in composing and editing sophisticated scores in the 21st century. Collaborative networks such as Zoom, Box, and Google Drive provide networking among production teams uh, to collaboratively be present in the musical process, um, regardless of their level of expertise in music production or music theory. And no matter a spectator's socioeconomic status, ethnicity, or linguistic background, one can participate and familiarize themselves in the musical score of Merced Shakespeare Fest's Ricardo El Segundo web series, which I will be talking about on the next slide. So methods and materials used for this study include practice as research, which details my collaboration with the artistic director and director of the community-based theater um, Merced Shakespeare Fest, located in Merced, California, and where I worked with William Wolfgang, uh, who is a PhD candidate from the University of Warwick in the UK, to film score the web series, um, underscoring and instrumentals for the show. I also use literature reviews of academic journals, including Hearing Music and Dreams, who lives, who dies, and who tells your story, and the publication iBroadway, which details musical theater in the digital age. I also use the case study slash autoethnography of my time as music director for Merced Shakespeare Fest, in which I used a DAW, um, Ableton Live 10, I used the education suite system to create a film score for Merced Shakespeare Fest's bilingual production and web series of Ricardo El Segundo, which is another a Spanish-English adaptation of William Shakespeare's Richard II. So for the results of the study, the next slide will contain a video of the finalized theme song of Ricardo El Segundo that was created using DAWs such as Ableton Live 10 and Pro Tools. I participated in the co-production of the instrumental and conducted the vocal production and songwriting of the piece. The example on the next slide shows the digitized instrumentals and sounds in real time that were used to create this Latin reggaeton and pop theme song. Using modernized language, the lyrics also present a modern synopsis of the narrative of the whole series. So let's go take a listen. 
And you'll see here, these are the different sound waves and the different instrumentals that are used. And this is only about half of the instrumentals that were used in digitized instrument. Um, but let's go ahead and take a listen. Yeah. hopefully enjoyed the theme song of Ricardo El Segundo, I wanted to present um, the first initial poster of the production, which is set to debut in fall of 2020. And pictured here is protagonist Ricardo El Segundo in front of Little Lake at the University of California in Merced. To wrap up my conclusion, electronic music production is influential to the sustainability of both professional and community-based grassroots theater production. A post-COVID-19 era beckons a need for collaborative, online, and digitized networks that can be easily used for musical compositions from a remote residency. So what's next? Providing affordable DAW instructional training for new artists and producers, such as Ableton Live's educational package, are a necessity. This provides dis discounted rates for university students and thus provides more accessibility and inclusivity. Expanding grassroots web series productions into larger nationwide platforms such as Disney Plus and Netflix um, through streaming services. And this has already been seen with Hamilton and Disney Plus. Listed here are references I have used throughout this presentation and throughout the Summer Research Institute to conduct this research. So I thank you very much for listening and cannot wait to debut our Ricardo II web series brought to you by Merced Shakespeare Fest. So thank you very much.